Hello fellow Rash fans, I apologize for the SmackDown video. It was up yesterday. Um I had major tension migraine. I went to bed with it. Um Thursday night, a Friday night, I'm sorry. I woke up Saturday, I still had the migraine. I apologize, but here is the review results video of SmackDown. I open up great. Kevin Owens, Dominic Mysterio for Elimination Chamber qualifying spot. Dominic was all by himself, no judgment day backup. He actually requested that no Judgment Day members be at ringside because he wanted to prove he could earn this qualifying opportunity by himself. Before the match, he said, Mommy's going to beat Nia Jax's ass at, at um, Lemonade Champion Keep a Belt. Damian and Finn Balor will retain the Tag Team Championships against Pete Dunne and Todd Bate. So I will go on to win the Lemonade Chamber, then beat Seth Rollins' resume and become World Champion. So Judgment Day will have all the titles on Monday Night Raw. Kevin Owens, as soon as the bell rang, Super kick Dominic, that was awesome. Stomps in the corner, cannonball in the corner, top rope, swan time, bomb, top rope, frog splash, awesome sequence. Dominic kicked out. Dominic regrouped outside. Kevin Owens went after him. Now allowed Dominic to kick him in the midsection. Arm drag takedowns. Her Karana. He went for the X Factor at one point in the match and he slipped. So that didn't look like he did connect all the way with the move. Suddenly our truth came out. And he was yelling at Dominic and all that. And Kevin Owens got distracted because Truth came out for the crowd. And Dominic knocked him down. Slingshot splashed him off the ropes. Started doing the free amigos. Kevin Owens counted the third one. Delivered two of his own. Dominic counted that third one with a nice DDT. Spiked Owens right on his head. Dominic went for the 619. Owens blocked it. Dominic heard Corona Owens to the ropes. Delivered the 619. Then he asked our troop for a steel chair. Our troop said, why would I give you a chair? You guys kicked my ass Monday night. And Dom was like, look, you give me a chair to help me win. You, I'll get you in judgment day. Truth said, really? So he grabbed a steel chair. Then our troop was like, I ain't falling for your tricks, boy. And he sat down. And he said, hey, look behind you. Dom turned around. Owens smoked his ass with a super kick. Then pop pop power bomb with a one, two, three. Kevin Owens enters the elimination chamber. Kevin Owens, every time he's in the chamber, he destroys Everybody. He does win them, but he does really great in the chamber. I was shocked Dominic Mysterio did not qualify for the chamber. Um, next up, the Offers of Pain defeated two NXT guys. I haven't even heard of any of them. In a squash match. It was like maybe two minutes. The audience weren't even cheering, weren't even booing. They were just dead silent for this match. On Talk and Smack, I was smacking went off the air. The Street Profits challenged the Offers of Pain to a match next week on SmackDown. A level one Montez Ford. He said, look, you guys have been here how many years? Last time you're here is four years ago. You guys start doing great. Then one of you gets injured and the other one just goes bye bye bye. You're both gone. He said, so pretty soon. He said, one of you is going to get hurt and you're going to be gone for out of four years. I loved it. That should be a good match. The Offers of Pain and the Street Profits. Because on NXT, when those two teams faced off, they could put on some good matches. So let's see how they do next week on SmackDown. We were supposed to have Tiffany Stratton versus Chelsea Blackheart an Elimination Chamber qualifying match, folks. But NXT last week um, taped the, uh, this week's episode in advance. Chelsea had a match with Audie Valkyrie, which we won't see until this Tuesday coming up, for the NXT Women's Championship. During the match, Chelsea injured her knee. The match had to be cut, had to be cut shorter than it did. Um... Uh, so, Chelsea's out with a knee injury. We don't know how bad it's going to be. Get well soon, Chelsea. Um, so, Chelsea was taking on Selena Vega. I mean, sorry. Chelsea was taking on Nainomi. No, wait. This is confusing. I'm sorry. Selena Vega was taking on... Oh, Selena Vega was taking on Nainomi. Tiffany Stratton was supposed to face Chelsea. So, Sh Tiffany Stratton faced Selena Vega. In a qualifying match. This is a good match. Selena Vega, man, that's a sexy orange outfit she had on. Wow, awesome outfit. She delivered an awesome move. This was like a 619. Knocked Tiffany Stratton off the ropes and to quickly deliver the top rope mirror roar. That was awesome. She had a sunset flip power bomb on Tiffany Stratton outside the ring. And then she looked around and she forgot where Santos Escobar's group was at ringside. That was funny. Uh, Tiffany Stratton was getting her ass kicked. Selena Vega running face slammed her down. Had a runner drop kick. You name it. Finally, Tiffany Stratton just destroyed Selena Vega. 
amazing move she does here. Tiffany Stratton does a cartwheel into Alabama Slam. That was awesome. Selena Vega went outside the ring. Um, Irish whipped Tiffany Stratton into the barricade where Santos Escobar's group was at. Carlito's group came out. They started arguing and bickering. Selena Vega got attacked with Dr. Lopez. They got into a scruffle, but the referee did not disqualify Lopez because she never touched Selena Vega. She just shoved her away. Um, Selena ran back to the ring because she almost got counted out. Tiffany splat her with a spine buster. Top rope moonsault to qualify for her first ever chamber match, Tiffany Stratton. Then we had Logan Paul versus The Miz one-on-one -on -one in an Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Great match these guys put on. Miz, I lost count how many yes kicks he delivered to Logan Paul. He did them twice. I don't know how many times he delivered them in the corner, then in the middle of the ring, but he just unloaded with yes kicks. Hit a running clothesline, a running big boot. Hit three more running clotheslines to Logan Paul. Scar crushing finale. Logan Paul was like, holy shit, getting my ass kicked here. Rolled out of the ring. Miz went after him. Logan Paul knocked him down. Rolled in the back of the ring and then Slingshot off the ropes into like a split leg, leg drop. That was awesome. Started pounding away on the Miz. DDT'd him. You name it. Then the Miz started working on the leg of Logan Paul. Kicks. Chop blocks. Um, stomping away on. Applied the figure four submission. Logan Paul got hold of the ropes for a rope break. Rolled out of the ring again to get away from the Miz. Miz pie faced Logan Paul down. Went back in the ring. Um, Logan Paul's friend was at ringside again and handed Logan Paul the brass knuckles. Man saw that, rolled out of the ring, attacked Logan Paul, grabbed a hold of the brass knuckles and tossed him halfway across the ring outside. Irish whipped Logan Paul back into the ring through the ropes, jumped into the ring. Logan Paul connected with some kind of like front face slam maneuver, picked him up, front slammed him for the one, two, three. Logan Paul is your winner going into the elimination chamber. So the man's chamber matches are completely filled up. We got Drew McIntyre, the only superstar from Monday Night Raw. That's interesting. SmackDown, you got the United States champion, Logan Paul, entering his first ever chamber. Kevin Owens entering the chamber. You got Elway Knight entering his the Monday chamber for the first time ever. You got Bobby Lashley entering the chamber for like the third time ever. Um, Stack chamber, man. Um, I am shocked Bronson Reed, is, oh, Randy Orton. I forgot about him, but that's the reason why. Um... Because nobody's exciting right now in the chamber. Bronson Reed um, is a god. So social media is saying that he wants to compete in Australia for his hometown. Or either will Bronson Reed have a match against someone. Or will Bronson Reed do what Edge did years ago. Which would be the second ever man to attack somebody. Take him out of the elimination chamber. And take his spot in the chamber. Or will Bronson Reed not have a match at all in his hometown of Australia. In the chamber next weekend. Let me know below your thoughts, what you think they're going to do with Bronx Reed. Out of those three options. Your main event was Naomi versus Kaylee Ray. She's the replacement for Chelsea Blackheart. And the final SmackDown Women's Elimination Chamber Qualify match. All the dollars ringside. This match is your main event. It was not a good main event. This match should be like the second or third match of the car. They should have put Owens... Dominic, Logan Paul, The Miz, or even Selena Vega, Tiffany Strat as your main event. It was all Nainomi. Nainomi hit her ass in the face of Kaylee Ray. This split leg, leg drop. Uh, Moose off the middle rope, knocking her down outside. Dance, ran, drove her face into the still steps and shook her ass again while she danced on the ring steps. Kaylee Ray got no offense in. What's her only thing she got was a couple kicks, a couple knees, and a face slam. That was it. Nainomi won with the Anaconda submission. She qualifies to fill in the chamber match. And then she danced afterwards. Like, that was your main event. I was disappointed, I thought. Then we had a 20-minute segment with the Bloodline shit. Where Roman Reigns then came out first for 10 minutes to talk. And then commercial. Rock comes out. Commercial. Come back. Rock's talking. He's got to go and best on now. I noticed something in this. I'm not the only person notices. It's been all for our YouTube and that. When The Rock is talking to the audience, he says, I will make sure at WrestleMania you will not become, you know, you will, bleh, you will not be Universal Champion. And he's pointing to the audience. Right? He's top of Cody Rhodes. But if you watch, when he says, I'll make damn sure you won't be Universal Champion after WrestleMania 40, his finger points Right in the direction of Roman Reigns. I noticed that. Is that leading to something? 
is The Rock just playing Roman Reigns. Maybe that's why Roman was shocked that Cody and The Rock was talking at first. Maybe this is a setup of Cody all along to get Rock into the bloodline and screw over Roman Reigns. Like maybe at WrestleMania, Roman will have the match won and like The Rock will pull out the referee or something and say, I screwed you over. Something like that. Next week on SmackDown, Ty the Bait and Pete Dunne will face Dominic Mysterio, JD Madugo, and a tag match. They're going to try to soften up Ty the Bait and Pete Dunne for they face Damian Priest and Ben Bauer the Chamber for the tag team titles. The Office of Pain versus the Street Profits is booked as well. Mac Tyre versus Ali Knight is booked as well on SmackDown next week. That's what's set up on a backstage segment where Mac Tyre says he's going to destroy all six men in the chamber, which I found funny because he only has to take out five of them. That was hilarious. He messed up there. Then Ali Knight walked up and said, Hey, you ain't going to take me out of that chamber, boy. You ain't eliminating me. I'm winning that chamber. So that's why they did this match. Interesting two sad free segments happened. One, Bailey was backstage with Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai game was trying to tell Bailey, look, I knew about Oscar and I'm gonna kick you out of damage control. I was with them on it, but then I felt bad because originally it was you, me, and EO. Then Oscar and Kyle Shane came in, convinced EO to take you out. She said, I'm with you. And Bailey's like, if you knew about this all along, you should have told me. So there's still trust issues there, right? Then a video package airs of EO Sky, Oscar, and Kyle Shane saying they're coming to take out Dakota Kai. So Dakota Kai is now trying to get Bailey on her side. Bailey's not having none of it. She's conflicted. That's an awesome storyline going on there, I think. Let me know below what you think of the storyline with Bailey and damage control with Dakota Kai where her allegiance lies. Also, Bra Breakers on SmackDown, folks. He signed that contract. Huge ovation. He's going to have a SmackDown debut match next week. Um, I don't know who he's facing yet. Um, hopefully it's somebody good. Not like a jobber or somebody like that. And AJ Styles was backstage. And the OC, Galvos Anderson, and me and walked up to him. And they said again, look. We're sorry we didn't have you back with the bloodline. It's done over with. Let's become a stable again. AJ Styles, you're not getting it. You guys did not have my back when I needed your help. You guys just think that it's fun walking around getting paid, not wrestling on shows and that. He said, where's the OC that dominated Monday Night Raw, that dominated SmackDown years ago? He said, you guys lost your spark. Carl Anderson shoved AJ Styles. Styles shoved the back and said, there is that spark. Then AJ walked away. AJ just gave them tough love, trying to get them to become the OC again, where they took out everybody, where they held the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And AJ was United States Champion. When they went to Raw, they held the Raw Tag Team Championship. And AJ Styles was United States Champion still. I'd love to see that OC come back. Um, our main event, we had Chelsea Green took on Tika Knox. Both went and wore purple. Chelsea Green got her ass handed to all match. Tika Knox hit the shiniest wizard. Run a knee to the face. Cannonball in the corner. Cannonball outside onto the barricade. She just mopped the floor, Chelsea Green. Then Chelsea Green wins the match with a handful of tights to steal the win. The next match, Akira Tozawa took on NXT's Dante Chin. He's the Japanese guy with the white face paint that we've been seeing off and on camera. They still have not introduced the other guy. I guess maybe he just got released. Um, this match was not all that good. Tozawa started the match, ripped off his shirt like Hulk Hogan style. Started dancing because Mexican Dupree is a ring size. She started dancing. Ran into a big boot by Dante Chin. Chin picked him up. Back-to-back -back backbreakers. Kept tossing half across the ring at three or four times. Tozawa hit the shiniest wizard. Top row swanton drop for the one, two, three. It was a fast match. Not very exciting at all. Main event this week again was disappointing. They were putting on a good matches on main event. But lately it's like the lack and excitement factor of those matches. Hopefully they realize... We got to put on some good matches on main event again. There we have it, folks. Um, next week on Raw, we got three huge matches. Jay Uso, will he defeat Gumford to become the new Intercontinental Champion? Now, also, I forgot to mention this. The Rock told Jimmy and Solo Sokoa to go to Raw and teach Jay a lesson about betraying, leaving the bloodline. Maybe Jimmy and Solo is going to cost Jay the Intercontinental opportunity against Gunford, which will lead to the match. Jay versus Jimmy, what's the think we're doing? Um, also, 
The last chamber qualifying slot on the women's will be determined by women's battle royal. We still don't know how many women's going to be in the battle royal until match time. And also, it's Drew McIntyre and Nakamura teaming up against Sami Zayn and Cody Rhodes. There we have it, folks. Stay safe at bye. I'm going to watch the season, for the series finale of L.A. Bree. I'm still upset that it's over. But I'm going to watch that, and I'm going to have a recap view of what happened on the season. So, a series finale. I'm still just shocked that the series is ending after three seasons. I'm just shocked. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet, bye.